So Chaos Demons now have access to warp storms. Are they good? Are they complicated? Find out more in this video. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Liam and we've started putting out loads of short form content to give you the information that Games Workshop chuck out on their community article, as well as my thoughts and opinions on these things. Games Workshop recently released even more rules previews for Codex Chaos Demons, the new anticipated codex that's coming soon, hopefully, we hope, because Demons have been waiting a long time considering 9th edition has already been out for a few years. And this comes in the form of a new ability called Warp Storms. Now, before we get into that, please, if you like these videos, hit that subscribe icon down in the, in the below bit. In the below bit, hit that subscribe icon. Turn that bell notification on so every time we drop a video, you guys don't miss it, especially because we go live four times a week, two battle reports, two talking heads, one of which is for our beautiful and wonderful members only. So think about becoming a member if you like the content that we do here. Anyway, Warp Storms. Warp Storms is the brand new ability in Codex Chaos Demons. There was an article on it on Warhammer Community on the 12th of August, giving you a little bit more detail. So we're going to talk about it briefly here. So what's Warp Storms? Warp Storms is their additional army rule that we've seen pretty much every Codex in 9th edition have. Games Workshop have added these into Codexes in 9th edition to add some narrative flavour to the Codexes, and I am all for adding narrative flavour. Sometimes they've been a swing and a hit, sometimes they've been a swing and a miss. For example, Eldar Fate Dice for me is a swing and a hit. A relatively simple mechanic, doesn't necessarily break the game, and it's quite a nice mechanic to have. Some of the other mechanics that have, hit, uh, that have been on the tabletop of some of these codexes, however, I haven't loved. For example, Canticles and Doctrinas and Admech are wildly complicated, and only certain units are affected, but sometimes they overlap. It's a mess. It's a mess. So we know every codex is getting an ability. Codex Chaos Demons, it's called Warp Storms. So what is it and how does it work? And is it a hit or a miss? Well, what Warp Storm is, is at the start of every turn, or battle round, it doesn't specify, but at the start of, I assume, battle round, you roll 8d6. On each result of a 4+, plus, you gain a Warp Storm point. So depending on how many 4 pluses you roll, depend on how strong that Warp Storm is on that planet that you're fighting on, on that battle grid, on that day. Then you have access to a number of Warp Storm abilities. There are eight for Chaos Undivided, and there are also additional Warp Storm abilities for detachments that consist solely of a certain patron uh, of corn. So a full corn demons detachment, for example, or a full Zinch demons detachment, for example, will get access to additional abilities. Games Workshop in that article did showcase some of these abilities, um, and we're going to go through the ones that they showcase. They showcase one from each god and a couple of the undivided ones. So basically, how do they work? Well, at any point during your turn, you can choose to spend your Warp Storm points on an ability, and typically they're going to be active for a phase, it seems. This is what the article seems to show us anyway. So it might be the fight phase or the shooting phase or the opponent's shooting phase. This is why I think you'll get warped on abilities at the start of the battle round, okay? So you get to turn on an ability. Now, if you're picking a Chaos Undivided ability, it essentially affects every single one of your models with the Legion Demonica keyword, which is the new thing that basically means they're a Chaos Demon. And all of those things will have that ability for that phase, whatever that ability might be. If, however, you pick an ability that's for a certain patron god, i.e. a Cornate-based ability, then only your Legion Demonica Corn units are going to benefit from that ability. So, let's have a look at what some of these abilities are. So they've showcased two Chaos Undivided abilities that will impact all of your units from uh, a, a Chaos Army, a Chaos Demon's Army. I have my trusty iPad here. Excuse me whilst I read it because I want to make sure I get the rule accurate and correct. The first one, three Warp Storm points. Now remember, 8d6, four pluses give you Warp Storm points. Mathematically, you're gaining four a battle round or turn, whichever one they choose. I don't think it actually tells us whether you get it at the start of the battle round or the turn. It simply says it's as simple as rolling eight dice and counting how many four pluses you score. A good turn will bestow plenty of warp storm points, but there's always a chance Zinch will trip you up and leave your eddies claimed, right? So it says a good turn. So I don't know if you're going to get them in enemy turns and friendly turns, or whether you're just going to get them at the start of the battle round. Who knows? But you're going to get typically four mathematically. Sometimes you'll get lucky. You'll get five or six. Sometimes you'll get worse. You'll get two or three. 
Just keep that in mind when we're talking about how many warp storm points things take. So the first one they showed us from Chaos Undivided is Descending Shadow, which is three warp storm points. Use this effect at the start of your opponent's shooting phase and until the end of the phase, each time a ranged attack is made against a Legioner's Domenica unit from your army. If the attacker is more than 12 inches away, subtract one from that hit roll. So as long as you're more than 12 inches away from your opponent, all of your demons are minus one to hit in melee. Uh, not melee, ranged. We've already also seen, however, they've done some work increasing the protection against ranged firepower with the new demonic invulnerable saves. So there is a potential that with three warp storm points, not only are you gaining an additional invulnerable save, so most of them are sort of four plus against ranged attack now, and we've seen that some of the zinc stuff is three plus invulnerable against ranged attacks, you're also going to be able to be minus one to hit. These demons are seeming to be pretty tanky and terrifying and quite hard to destroy, kind of like demons, demon spawn should be. There's another one for two warp storm points. It's one warp storm point less. Use this effect at the start of the reinforcement step of your opponent's movement phase. Until the end of that step, enemy strategic reserve units can only be set up as if it were the second battle round. That clearly restricts with strategic reserves where on the battle grid they can come in, which is important. Now that's two warp storm. Assuming there are other abilities that are two warp storm points or three warp storm points, if you gain five warp storm points at the start of the turn, you can, instead of blowing your load on an expensive ability, do two or three of these abilities in a turn, which is interesting. You have that trade-off. Do I go for this really powerful warp storm ability or do I take two not so powerful but still impactful abilities to try and change the tide and the flow of the game? We then go on to the god-specific abilities. I am going to put all of these on the screen as well. The first two is for Corn and Nurgle. Corn is Fury of Corn. Now, this is four warp storm points. It's a big deal because, like I said, mathematically you'll get four. So if you use this ability, then on average you're using almost all of your warp storm points on this one ability. And it says use this effect at the start of the fight phase, of the fight phase, yours or your opponent's, until the end of the phase, add one to the attack's characteristics of Legion Demonica corn models from your army. Plus one attack for all corn demons in your army. You can see why it's four warp storm points. That's a big deal. Especially considering we've seen the stat line of a bloodletter. They're up to strength five now as well. They've already got a number of attacks more than they used to have. It's good. Wave of Sickness is the Nurgle one for two warp storm points. Use this effect at the start. I think this should be more. By the way, I think this should be more than two warp storm points. This should be at least three, which is one of Nurgle's numbers. At least three. Listen to this. Use this effect at the start of your shooting phase. Roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches of one or more Legion Demonica Nurgle units from your army. On a 6, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. I know you need to roll a 6, but if your whole army is all within 12 inches of the whole of your opponent's army, every single one of your opponent's army is rolling a 6, or rolling a d6, and on a 6, suffering d3 mortal wounds. It's essentially chain smite. That's crazy. That's really good. We then have a separate box that shows us the Zinch and Slanesh versions of these Warp Storm abilities. We don't know how many of the Patreon gods are going to get. They only said there's eight for Chaos Undivided. I don't see, think we'll see eight for each god as well. That seems a bit much. But they have showcased one of each. So we've got Sorceress Wins for Zinch. Three Warp Storm points. Use this effect at the start of your Psychic phase. Until the end of the phase, each time a Psychic test is taken for a Legion Demonica Zinch unit from your army, add one to the Psychic test. So plus one Psychic across your whole Zinch Demon army, assuming that a lot of those units can do psychic powers. It's a pretty big deal. Mesmerizing Dance is four warp storm points. So again, it's quite expensive. Same as the corn one, four warp storm points. Use this effect at the start of the fight phase. Again, the fight phase, not your fight phase, the fight phase. Until the end of the phase, each Legion Demonica Celeste unit from your army that is within engagement range of any many units can fight first this phase. That's a big deal as well, because if you use that particular ability, and your opponent's charged you, you essentially get a free interrupt without spending two command points, and then you can spend two command points for another interrupt. That's tasty, isn't it? It's really good. Slash demons fighting first everywhere. Again, what do Slash demons want to do? Much like corn demons, they want to be in melee with you, so we can assume that that's quite a big deal for Slash demons, hence the four warps on point cost. Now, <clears throat> do I like it? I actually really love this. Now, I have been on record as saying that Chaos Demons is one of the first codecs that we worked on as a team. So um, we have seen some of these rules in the past and had a hand in shaping some of them. And I really like this. This is, for me, an example of an army-wide ability that hits the mark and knocks it out of the park. 
Why do I say that? Well, it's actually very, very simple. You're just rolling eight dice and you're keeping four pluses. There's nothing wildly complicated about that particularly. And then you've got a set of abilities, eight undivided, a number depending on how many different detachments of different gods you've got. So if you've got a detachment of Zinch, a detachment of Corn, you'll get the Corn and uh, Zinch benefits as well. You pick an ability, it just affects Corn demons or Zinch demons or all demons and you apply it and it's very simple and it's applied to every model. You don't have to have core and then be in the third inch of the fourth quarter of the second table that you've played on whilst the moon is just above your house and your opponent is exactly 12 months younger than you. You don't need all those qualifying factors. You just need to apply it to corn demon models or zinc demon models or all demon models. That's why I think it's really, really nice. When the abilities sound powerful, plus one attack for corn, fight first for slash, they've made them four warp storm points. That means, like I said, mathematically you're gaining four, so you can only do that one ability with your corn warp storm or your slash warp storm abilities. You can only do that one, typically, mathematically, because you'll get four warp storm points. If you're hyper lucky, if the warp winds are in your favour, if this planet is severely tainted by the warp and by chaos, you might get six warp storm points. You might be able to throw four on the corn ability and still have two left over to do the Nurgle ability if you've got Nurgle demons as well. But you have to be lucky for that. You can't just plan for it and guarantee it's going to happen. And that's why I really love this rule. I really love this flavor for demons. It's simple, it's easy to remember, it's easy to apply, and you can't guarantee that you break the game. We can assume in the Codex there will be ways of affecting Warp Storm, the same as the ways of affecting Fate Dice in Eldar. But if you look at the ways you affect Fate Dice in Eldar, there's essentially a Warlord trait, there's a Relic, and there's an ability in the custom craft for Eldar tributes. There's three ways you can affect them. Two of them allow you to roll additional dice for your Fate Dice. One of them lets you keep an additional one, that's it. No more. So assuming in the Demon's Codex, there'll be similar two, three, four ways of maybe manipulating the Warp Storm. I'm okay with that. They do show off, my trusty iPad once again, they do show off the Tally Man with his ability Tally of Pestilence on the screen right now. While this model is on the battlefield, keep a tally of how many enemy models are destroyed by attacks made by Legion Demonica Nurgle units from your army at the start of each battle round. If there are seven or more marks on the tally, after making a Warp Storm roll, gain one additional Warp Storm point and reset the tally to zero. If this model is destroyed, any marks on that tally are lost. Enemy models destroyed by attacks, not enemy units. So with the Tally Man, if you're killing seven or more models a turn, you're gaining one extra Warp Storm point. Doesn't seem broken, does it? I actually quite like that. I think it's quite... I think it's quite narrative for the tally man. He keeps his tally of seven. He gives you an additional warp storm point. It's one more though. It's not game breaking. It's one more. That's it. That's why I think this is a really nice, tidy rule that Games Workshop brought out for Corman Demons. It's narrative. It's flavorful. It gives you some cool abilities. It's random, which is one of the things I love about 40k. I don't like this competitive, I can guarantee it always happens nonsense. I like the randomness of a D6 game. You're rolling 8D6. You could. It's possible. It's unlikely but it's possible that you roll eight dice that are all under four pluses and for that particular turn you get no warp storm points. I like that randomness. I like the fact that that adds narrative flavour and for that out the park. They've hit this one out the park. It's a swing and a hit. Games Workshop have done a great job of this and I'm really happy to see this rule in the Chaos Demons Codex. So that's my thoughts on Chaos Demon Warp Storms. However, I'm not always right and I don't always speak for everyone so I'd love to know what you guys think of Warp Storm points from what you've seen so far. Couple it as with the other rules that we've seen, for example, demonic and vulnerability and some of the profiles that we've seen from the corn demons, etc. Let me know what you think of these changes to Chaos Demons. Do you think they're still going to be the whipping boy on the tabletop, or do you think Chaos Demons have now got some bite? I think the latter. I'm very excited to see what this codex brings, and I'm very excited to get my corn demons out again, not just because I think I should play them, but because I actually want to stick them on the tabletop, and my opponent's going to be quite frightened of them. So let me know in the comments below what you think of these demonic changes. I think they're nice. I like them. Anyway, like we said at the start, if you do love these videos, if you're enjoying this content, please hit that subscribe button. More importantly, please share these videos around. Show the people that you know that play 40k these videos because we're trying to grow our audience base here. Hit that sub button, hit that bell notification icon so that every time we drop a video or we go live, you are notified of this content. If you're a member already and you're not part of the Great Hall, get yourself in the Great Hall Discord server. It's an incredible community full of wonderful, like-minded 40k people. And that way, when we go live for the members only, content you'll be notified for that as well 
Don't miss the members only battle reports every single Tuesday at 7.30. We are planning more things for members and for non-members actually. So please make sure you stick around because I'm sure you'll love us. If you get to picking up the new Chaos Demons Codex whenever it drops, or if you want to pick up any new Chaos Demon models in preparation for this codex, please use the Element Games link in the video description below. Directly supports the channel and we're ever so grateful for you guys doing that for us. Thank you so much all of you who have been using that link so far. It means the world to us, it's amazing. And if you really love what you do here, or if you really love what you do here, if you really love what we do here, you could think about becoming a channel member. If you click the join button below the video, it will give you all the different benefits that we offer for our channel members at all the different tiers. I love everyone who's a member of our, I love members. I just love massive members, what more can I say? Anyway, that's everything from me guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.